In this video we take a look at how an in-phase microinverter is connected and we assume you would have watched the video showing the different products, product codes and descriptions. As microinverters are bolted onto the solar module mounting structure, a microinverter installation starts with the planning of the overall system. Start with the design of your system by looking at the layout of the modules on the roof. Next, take a look at the modules and identify more or less where the junction boxes will be positioned once the modules have been installed. In some cases, junction boxes could cause obstructions and microinverters should ideally not be installed directly underneath junction boxes. Mark the position of each module on the mounting structure. Now that the positions have been marked, let's take a closer look. In this example, we are going to start with a single microinverter to simplify the installation process. We have the mounting structure rail at the top of the screen. The microinverter is bolted onto the rail and will be placed underneath each solar module. They will ideally be bolted onto the rail with a silver backplate facing up. This serves as an additional measure of preventing obstructions on the module by pressing against the inverter. Next in line to be fitted is the Q-cable. Remember this cable is available for modules in portrait or landscape configuration. In this example we have used the portrait cable with a 1 meter section of conductor connected to the coupler. You will see the Q-cable has two ends. With the ends stripped we are ready to terminate the cable. The long end of the cable will go to the DB board. The short end is either extended to the microinverter or capped with a Q terminator. In order to extend the conductors we have two choices. Either use the in-phase male and female connectors or use a junction box. From the junction box another section of cable will be extended all the way down to the DB board or to where the Q relay is fitted. Before fitting the Q terminator there are a few very important items to note. This is a Q terminator. We have cut it open to show you what it looks like on the inside. A Q terminator effectively has three parts to it, a body, a grommet and a nut. The back end of the Q terminator is extended with a hole that can be used to keep the body in a fixed position with something like a screwdriver while fastening the nut with a pliers or spanner. It also serves as a guide that helps us to determine the exact amount of insulation that needs to be stripped back as we have to expose the two conductors that will be separated by the V-shape inside the terminator. Remember that a Q terminator can only be used once. If the nut is undone for whatever reason, the entire Q terminator is destroyed. The conductors going into the Q terminator should be in the region of 13 millimeters long. So let's shorten those quickly. And then, very very important, remember to turn the nut of the Q terminator and hold the body firm. The terminator has been fitted and the cable extended down to the Q relay's point of installation. Remember the Q relay is simply there to ensure that the in-phase microinverter installation is NRS compliant. This is a South African installation requirement that might also be enforced in other countries. Looking at the Q relay, we see the two grid and from PV embossed on the unit. Ensure that your wiring is done correctly. In order to safeguard the Q relay and conductors we need to fit a 20 amp 2 pole circuit breaker. There are only two conductors in the black Q cable, one live and one neutral. Connect the neutral to the neutral bar and the live to its dedicated position in the DB board. Please refer to the wiring code to ensure this part of the installation is done correctly. A current transformer or CT will be connected to the line coming from the microinverter. This CT will provide the production related data to the in-phase envoy. The in-phase envoy is the device that sends production and consumption information to the online portal. Pay particular attention to the termination points for production and consumption. The envoy also needs to be kept alive and we will need a power point that can be powered from a circuit breaker. 
The envoy is supplied with 200 amp CTs in the box. The one CT will be used for production data and the other for consumption data. Theoretically, this completes the installation and if you were to switch all the circuit breakers on, the LED on the microinverter will illuminate green as confirmation of the microinverter having synchronized with the grid and being operational.